The following video is produced by the Computer History Archives Project, dedicated to the study and sharing of vintage computing technologies. In this video, we take a high-level view of the world of computer punch cards. Most people today are not familiar with computer punch cards used in very large computer systems, except perhaps as seen in very old movies, such as Desk Set in 1957 or The Billion Dollar Brain in 1967. Most punch card computers have long since been replaced, but a few still exist and operate. Some are in museum collections. A fascinating element in the history of computing is the role played by punch cards and the wide variety of uses they provided by the early 1960s, up even to the early 1980s. Historically, punched cards as a method of controlling the actions of early textile machines goes back to the 18th century. There were a number of early pioneers in this field. For the purposes of this video, we will mention four of the most notable. Joseph Marie Jacquard, Charles Babbage, Herman Hollerith, and James L. Powers. Joseph Marie Jacquard, born in 1752, improved on earlier techniques of using punched cards to program the textile machines that performed mechanical weaving. His 1805 punch card loom machine saved considerable time and labor and was widely successful. Charles Babbage, born in 1791, developed the design for an analytical engine, a general-purpose programmable computing engine, that borrowed Jacquard's idea for punch cards that provided programmed instructions. Herman Hollerith, born in 1860, developed a mechanical tabulator based on punched cards to rapidly tabulate statistics from millions of pieces of data. His machines were used to record the data from the 1890 U.S. Census. In 1896, he founded the Tabulating Machine Company that later merged with several other companies to become the Computing, Tabulating, and Recording Company, or CTR. In 1924, CTR was renamed International Business Machines Corporation, known by its world-famous initials, IBM. James L. Powers, born in 1871, developed a tabulating machine that differed from Herman Hollerith's and was faster and more economical at the time. In 1911, Powers formed the Powers Tabulating Machine Company. He later changed the name to the Powers Accounting Machine Company for better marketing results. In 1927, Powers Accounting Machine Company merged with the Remington Typewriter Company and Rand Cardex to form Remington Rand. In 1950, Remington Rand acquired the Eckert Mockley Computer Company, designers of the Univac. Remington merged with Sperry in 1955 to form Sperry, Rand, and later in 1986 with Burroughs to form Unisys. Today, both IBM and Unisys are global players in information technology solutions, but share the field with many other newer and even larger players. The success of punch card technology, as used by the U.S. Government Census Bureau, led to increased use in business applications. During the early 1900s, Remington Rand was a leader in punch card accounting for commercial applications, with IBM a close second. By 1929, however, IBM surpassed Remington Rand as the leading company in supplying machines for business and government, and was better able to survive the economic depression of 1929 and the early 1930s. IBM had switched to using 80-column cards with rectangular holes in 1928. IBM had used round holes in its cards up until that time. The now famous IBM card measured just 7 and 3 eighths by 3 and 1 quarter inches, and that size remained standard for years to come. Remington continued using round holes for many years, but switched to a 90-column format in 1930. By 1940, IBM dominated about 90% of the tabulating market. It became the major supplier to the government of its accounting and later its computing technology 
for Social Security applications and military applications. Seen here in this 1946 U.S. government video, the ENIAC, the first large-scale digital electronic computer built, used IBM card readers and card punch machines. Punch cards were used both for program instructions for machines and for data input and output. The IBM punch card became the standard medium for data storage up through the 1960s. The widespread acceptance of punch card equipment helped IBM grow a large customer base, giving it an advantage as it moved into the electronic computer's age. In 1931, IBM released its Model 600 multiplying punch. IBM's first punch card machine that could multiply the first calculating punch machines were electromechanical. Later models employed vacuum tube logic. Instructions were hardwired. Later, removable control circuits provided flexibility in programming, such as in the highly successful IBM 604 electronic calculating punch, introduced in 1948. In 1953, IBM announced the 650 magnetic drum data processing machine one of its early computers. In 1956, it was enhanced as the IBM 650 RAMAC system with the addition of disk storage units. Nearly 2,000 systems were produced up until 1962. The Model 029 key punch was introduced in 1964 with the IBM System 360 mainframe system. The Model 029 was the workhorse machine for many years. Introduced with System 370 in 1971, the IBM 129 key punch machine was capable of punching, verifying, and being used as an auxiliary, online card reader, or card punch for attached computers. Punched cards were still commonly used for data entry and programming until the mid-1980s. However, the advancement of video display terminals, interactive computing, networks, and personal computers allowed users to efficiently enter data directly into computers from the keyboard or rely on other electronic input with much higher speed and reliability. Here are some examples of punch cards and their various applications. For more information, please see the following resources. We would also like to thank the following for their support in making this presentation possible.
What are you doing? I'm programming the general's orders. Anya must be safe. And Leo must be safe. 